Next, I'd like to spend a few minutes discussing statistical interactions and regression, which are arguably one of our most powerful tools for understanding how variables relate to one another and interact with one another in their influence on some other outcome variable. In order to do this, we'll be using the studying.sav dataset, which is a made up dataset that I use just for this example. So the idea of an interaction is that two variables are dependent on one another in relation to their effect on an outcome variable. So the effect of a variable, say x1, on y, on an outcome variable, depends on the level of another variable, x2. And so I want to go through an example here that hopefully will illuminate how this works. In this data set, I make the following contention. The more you study, that'll be our x1, the better you might do on the marketing research final exam, y. That's the outcome. So, so far, this is straightforward. We have one variable, the amount of time you spend studying, predicting another variable, your success on the marketing research final exam. We have another variable, which is whether you choose to study for marketing research or choose to study for a different but related class, we'll call it regression. And so what we'll say is that in general, regardless of what you study, you'll do better on the final exam, that's X1. But if you study the slides for marketing research, you'll do better on the marketing research final as compared to if you studied for regression. In other words, studying for the right exam is more effective than studying for another but perhaps related exam. So just to clarify, we have x1, our first variable, is the hours spent studying. This will be a continuous variable. We have x2 is a dummy variable, which is zero if you studied for regression and one if you studied for marketing research. And we have Y, which is the score on the marketing research final exam. So as always, let's just take a look at the data and see what we can observe. So here we have on the X axis, the number of hours spent studying for any exam. And in my hypothetical universe, you can only study for one exam or the other. You can't study for both. On the Y axis, we have the score on the marketing research final exam. And what we have in green are all the data points for those who studied for marketing research. And in blue, we have the score for all those individuals who studied for regression. So very quickly, we can see that the green dots tend to be above the blue dots. That's the idea that studying for marketing research is probably more effective than studying for regression. And perhaps there's also a positive correlation such that the more time you spend studying, the better off you are on the marketing research final exam. But we don't know that, we have to actually test that empirically. So here we have the data. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. We have four columns, the student ID number, the hours spent studying by that student, which course they studied for. So again, zero indicates they studied for regression, one indicates they studied for marketing research, and then we have the outcome variable, their score on the final exam. So the first we just wanna say, is it the case that the more one studies, the better they do on the exam? So that's easy, we know how to do that. We say analyze, regression, linear. We wanna predict, the marketing research final exam score with the number of hours spent studying. If we hit OK, we find that our output suggests significant results. So this is 0 0.01, it's less than 0 0.05. And it indicates that for every hour you spend studying, you gain 2.5 points on the marketing research final exam. So that's great. That tells us that studying is actually beneficial. We also want to know if studying for marketing research as compared to regression will result in a higher score on the final exam. So there's two ways in which we can do this. The first is we can use regression with a dummy code, or just to mix things up, we can do an independent sample t-test, which we've done before. So we can say analyze, compare means, independent sample t-test. The outcome we're interested in is the marketing research final score. And we wanna know which course was studied for. That's gonna be our grouping variable. We need to define the groups. Here we're comparing zero and one. We hit continue, we hit okay. And we find, if we look at the significance for this first row, that very much so there's an effect. And we can look right up here at the means and we see that if you study for marketing research, on average you get a 67 on your final. If you study for regression, on average you get a 25. So there's a 42 point benefit to studying for the right exam. But what we really wanna know is if the influence of the hours spent studying on the final exam depends on which exam you studied for. In other words, is it the case that if you studied a lot for regression, that might not be as beneficial as if you studied a lot for marketing research? And the way we do this is by creating an interaction term. Now SPSS doesn't have the way to do this automatically, so we have to create this term. 
which is literally just the multiplication of the two variables we're interested in. So under transform, we have a value called compute variables. We're going to create a new term and we're going to call it hours times which, meaning which course. And we're going to say hours study times which course. So we'll have a new variable, which is just the multiplication of the two. And I hit OK. And if we just look at the data here, we find that when the value for which course is one, the interactive term is just the number of hours studied, five. If we look at the third row, the number of hours studied is two, but you studied for a regression, which is two times zero, so the value is zero. So it's really just the multiplication of these two variables. And now we want to run a regression. So we're going to analyze, regress, linear. And instead of just the hours studied, we're going to include which course you studied for, as well as the interaction between the two. One thing to point out is that whenever we have an interaction term, we absolutely must include the underlying variables that are in their interaction. In other words, we have hours and which here, we must include the two underlying values in order for us to be able to interpret the results of this regression analysis. So we'll run this and we'll see what happens. So we run this and we scroll down to our coefficients and we see first of all, that there is no overall effect of the number of hours spent studying on an exam. It's not significant. There's still an overall effect of which exam you study for, but most critically, there's an interaction, 0.036 here, suggesting that the degree of influence of the number of hours spent studying on the exam depends on which exam you actually studied for. So let me show you what the math behind this looks like. As you can see, your score is equal to beta zero plus beta one, some coefficient we'll estimate, times the number of hours spent studying, plus beta two, which is the which exam you spent studying for, plus beta three, which is just the multiplication of the two, plus some error term. If we populate this with the values that we got a moment ago, we get this equation over here. And just to give you a sense of how this works, let's imagine for a second that somebody studied for five hours and they studied for marketing research. If we start with our equation and we plug in our values, so we simply say our co constant 21.99 plus 0 0.70, which is the coefficient associated with the number of hours spent studying times five, plus 28.91, which is the coefficient associated with which exam you spent times one because you studied for marketing research, plus 2.78, which is our interaction coefficient beta three times five, the number of hours spent studying times one because that's the exam that you studied for. That means that we predict that this person would get a score of 68.3. Another way to think about this is this value here is the value you get for studying at all. So you get some value for studying for an exam for five hours. This is the value you get from studying for the right exam. And this is almost like a bonus for studying at all and not just that, but for studying for the right exam. Let's take one more example. Imagine somebody spent five hours studying, but they studied for the wrong exam. They studied for regression instead of marketing research. So we go through the same exercise. We plug in our values. We find that it winds up being 21.99 plus 0 0.70 times five. That's the same. Plus 28.91, but times zero, because it's the wrong exam. Plus 2.78, that's the interaction coefficient, times five hours, times zero, it's the wrong exam. That again drops off to zero. And so we expect that this person would only get 25.5 on their exam. Again, we find that this is the increase you get for studying anything. There's no increase because you studied for the wrong exam and there's no bonus because you again studied for the wrong exam. And so what we could do is we can plot this and see what the predictions actually look like visually. So here on the X axis, again, I have the number of hours spent studying. On the Y axis, I have the predicted value from our model. The green circles represent the scores we predict if you studied for marketing research, and the blue circles are the values we predict if you studied for regression. And so there's three things going on here. One is the difference between the green circles and the blue circles. So the green circles are much higher than the blue circles in general. That's what you get for studying for the right exam. There's a slight upward trend, though it's not significant, which is that studying for the exam helps at all. And the interaction is observed through the difference in the slopes. So you can see that the green slope is much steeper, meaning that the more you study, the more bang you get for your buck. 
and the blue slope is pretty flat, meaning even though you studied a lot, you didn't get quite as much out of it. So this is the idea of an interaction. It's that one variable's influence, in this case, let's say hours spent studying an exam, on an outcome variable, in this case, the score you got on your final, that relationship is going to depend on whether you actually had studied for the right exam or for the wrong exam. So that's the intuition behind interactions, and we'll look at how to actually implement these in a business context when we come back to the case we were working on in the previous two videos.